In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power App Starts With Filter. So it starts with this handy little trick that lets us get around a lot of the delegation challenges that you're having with things like SharePoint. So we're going to learn how to use the Starts With operator. We're also going to apply it to a combo box because it was like a mind-blowing thing that Juan showed me earlier on how to do this, so I'm going to share it with you. Should be fun. Should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to do the Power App Starts With filter. And so the idea here is it starts with is a function or operator. I don't know, I get confused what you call them too. But a piece that we can add to our filter formulas. And the really interesting part about it is that it is delegable to our SharePoint data source. It's delegable also to Dataverse and to SQL Server, but not Salesforce. But anyway, it solves some of the delegation challenges you have because with SharePoint, one of the number one complaints is that we can't use the search function. And so since we can't use the search function, starts with gives us a, a halfway push there. So not something I use often enough. I haven't put in any videos. So I was like, wait, we should probably talk about this. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, um, you can see I just opened up a blank white app. I haven't done anything to it. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to add one of our SharePoint lists. Remember, this works with other data sources, but we're going to focus on SharePoint. Um, which I think that's the one that's most interesting to a lot of you. And so what we're going to do is in my SharePoint list, I have one called Giant, and it has 35,000 items. And so we know that you know, I used that same list when we talked about delegation and how search wasn't delegable, and we all went, wah, right? Search not being delegable makes us all angry. So we're going to pull this in over here. So we'll just go over here. We'll say data, and then we'll add data, and then we'll search for SharePoint. There it is. We'll use one of my connections. And then over here, we're going to use the Shane team site, because that's where I keep the giant list for some weird reason. And so there's giant. We'll add that and connect. And now keep in mind, if like when I'm talking about delegation, if you have no idea what I mean, then you should go watch the delegation video first, because A, you can't be a Power Apps maker without understanding delegation, and B, you'll appreciate this one more once you see that one. So with that said, now that we've got our list here, I'll go here. And so we'll say we're going to insert a gallery. So insert a gallery. We're going to tell it to use giant. And then I'm just going to set it to good old title, subtitle, and body, something like that, right? So just your normal SharePoint list. And so we all know that this being in a gallery, in theory, we could scroll to the list at the bottom of the 35,000 items, right? No big deal. It would be happy. And our delegation settings are just at their standard the out-of-the-box 500 row limit. So what does that mean, right? That means that if we were to go up here and write a function like search giant um, where, you know, dog, or we'll just do do, is in the column animal, like that, we get the blue underline, right? We get the yellow triangle. And if we were to scroll, let's just scroll real quick to the bottom, you would see that it only searches literally the first 500 records. And so 495 is the last record in the first 500 that has it. And if we scroll down, right, it won't go any further. That's the delegation problem we have. And it is search who does that, right? It turned blue because it's like, hey, search is not delegable to this data source. So that makes us angry. No big deal. What we can do, is use this filter function. So I shouldn't type the word is, I should type the word filter. So we're going to say filter. No, oh, not that. Filter giant. Oh my goodness. Who is, knows how to type? Filter giant. And then here we're going to say starts with. And so then it's like, all right, what uh, column do you want to look in? I want to look in the animal column. And then we'll say it starts with DO. So just like that. So now you'll notice here that we're going to get results back in just a moment. And it is only the ones that have dog, right? So item title 2, 5, 10, etc. But there are no delegation warnings. And more importantly, if we scroll way down here at the bottom, there's our 495 list. We just kept on going. Oh, we loaded more. We loaded more, right? And so we, in theory, could scroll through the, you know, I don't know, 12,000 or so records that have uh, the item title of dog. Or sorry, the uh, animal of dog. You will also notice up here that it starts with that it is not case sensitive. So I did DO, so capital letters, just so we could see that it didn't have to be case sensitive. But there you go. So with the starts with function, you can 
start with, right? Now, this is a little bit different than search. Remember, search is a true full text search index. Starts with, it has to be the first two letters, right? If we change this to be like starts with OG, right, for original gangster, or the second half of the word dog, whatever, you're going to see that we get no results because nothing starts with OG. So keep that in mind. It does have to get it correct, but when it starts with a D, that should work just fine as well. Okay? So kind of interesting. So you can start to think about providing that full text search to your users, but it's not a full text search. It is a beginning with. So how would you make this a little more dynamic? Well, we could insert a text input up here at the top. There you go. We'll just get rid of the default text style there. And now we can come in here and replace this portion with text input one dot text. And so then now if we hit play and we clear this out, also text input is nothing. So if you have it completely blank, it shows you everything, right? Two, three, four, five. But if we type in DO now, now it is starting to filter down the data. And more importantly, we can keep scrolling forever and ever and ever, you know, down here and we're able to work our way through. So a way for you to get search results for your users. Now, one thing to be cautioned from, this came from Anthony on my team, new guy, just started uh, this week. So hi, Anthony. Um, one of the things he pointed out that he'd seen in the past with this is people accidentally had spaces at the end. So remember, that is now the string DO space. Nothing starts with DO space, so that causes issues. So what Anthony suggested and I liked was you can go right here and you can say trim. You know, the trim function takes the spaces off the beginning and end. And so then now, even though my user typed in DO with a space, right, and do a bunch of spaces, it is still going to work just fine. So I thought that was a nice little bonus tip. Okay, so that is very helpful. Now the next thing you might be saying, all right, Shane, well that works for one column. What if I wanted to search where either the uh, animal column or the title column started with that? That is fair. All you do is come up here and say like starts with, and then you're just gonna write your typical filter. So or, capital O, starts with. So you can't nest it inside of starts with. We're gonna have two starts with functions. But then we'd say starts with title, and it also just starts with this exact same thing. Right? I'm too lazy to type it again, so control C, control V, and then that's the end of that. One more close parenthesis, and so then now our little search should be working. So there's our item titles uh, dogs. But if we start to type in item title uh, 25, 200, 250, right? A really big number. You can see that it gets to 250, the 2,500, it'll get the 25,000, right? It's gonna return a lot of search results. Um, no delegation challenges here either, right? We're in good shape, we get all the results. Um, and so and if we go right back to uh, CO for cow, then now we're just seeing the cows. So th that's the other good thing with starts with is like it doesn't make a new set of rules you have to follow. You can continue to have your ors or your ands, right? So we could be like, all right, I want to do starts with, let's just do that and then we'll get rid of this portion for a second, right? We'll pull that back out, make sure it works, right? We got to test some baby steps. So I didn't break my formula there. And then we'll just go right here and say and um, color, which is the last column in there, equals red. Oh, we got to capitalize red like that. And so then now we should only see the ones that start with CO and their color is red. So, you know, having a multi-part uh, filter here starts with doesn't care either. So very cool, right? You see where starts with can help you. Now, what's interesting is that starts with, um, you know, if we look at the delegation, starts with works for dataverse text columns. It works for SQL text columns. It works for SharePoint text columns and SharePoint complex column. So like you could do starts with and then person name and against a person field. So kind of fun stuff, right? It would just be, let's see. So we could say, start, let's try this. Let's see if we can write this real quick. I didn't plan, practice this one, but we're going to be brave and try it on the fly. So starts with, um, and so we'll say created by dot display name. And then what do we want to see if it starts with? Shane, because I created all of them. And so if we get a bunch of results here in a second, please work, please work, please work. Yay! I, no, I didn't try that. I meant to try before I started recording. Oops. So, but there you can see that that's how that is going to let you do it against some of your different complex columns. So I haven't played with that one a lot. 
uh, but just a reminder that you use your shovel, right, your dot to dot notate in. So it's just not against created by, it's created by dot display name starts with, you know, SHA. And so that would return them. It's returning all the results because I created everything. Um, but that's just a quick way to prove that that worked. Okay, so kind of interesting. Now, ready for the next super interesting one? I did not think of this. This was all one. Um, I was asking for ideas. So if we throw a combo box in here, okay? So one of the things we know about using a combo box against SharePoint lists, right? So if we just say use giants, that you know, with our combo box, we get the yellow triangle right away because the search portion doesn't work, right? Underneath the hood, the combo box uses the search, um, uh, what do you call it? The search function to do its thing, and that's not supported against SharePoint. So you always get this warning when you use SharePoint. But what Juan came up with, which was genius, was he's like, hey, let's go over here. So set the field. So we're showing, let's just show item title, and then we're going to set it to search against title. Okay. So he does that. Then he comes up here, and we're going to modify this formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want to filter giant where uh, starts with, doo, 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 doo. and so what column? We want the title column, and what does it start with? Self dot search text. So if you haven't used ser uh, self before, that's just a way to reference the control, right? Myself. So it's saying, hey, and so instead of writing combo box one dot search text, we write self dot search text. And the beauty of this is, is if I take this formula and copy it to another combo box, it would just work because it would always just be referencing itself. But so we just close that up, and then we close this up. Now, now when we do this, we're going to hopefully see if I did that right. Let's try it. We'll hit play. Er, where's my mouse? I lost my mouse. Give me your mouse. There you go. Hit play. So we'll go up here. So we see all of them. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to make it searchable. No big deal, right? What do we do? We just go over and we'll say drop down and say is searchable. Set you to true. There you go. So it's angry again because it knows that SharePoint can't handle being as searchable. So you still see the warning. But interestingly enough, if we start going in here and be like, all right, search for item title uh, 250, right? Look at that. We're seeing past 500. We're seeing the 2500s. We're seeing all the way through the 25,000s. So really neat little trick that Juan came up with. And just to prove that it's really Juan's trick that did it, if we go back here and we just change the items back to regular old giant. So let's just put in giant. And then, oh, let's try this again. Put in giant, giant. So if we put in giant like that, and then we make sure is searchable stayed true. Nope, see, they broke it. Set that back to true. Now, if you... Um, what are you at? Manger. What are you mad about? Could I just set? No, so that looks right. If we go to items. Mm, is it just not like this? Let's remove this. Control X. Nope, it's okay with that. Which field did I mess up? Who's surprised that the combo box is being rude face? Oh, I hate this control so much. If we delete all that out. It's okay. If we type in giant, it's okay. If we then say is searchable, is true. Ugh. It's the exact thing we just did. Whatever. I always leave the screw ups. If you're new to the channel, I leave the screw ups. I find people enjoy watching that even I get really aggravate, aggravated power apps sometimes. But look, so now if we search for item title 250, we literally only get item title 250 because it's not delegable, so that means it's only searching the first 250 items. So if we do 45, you know, right, so we get 45, 450, it stops at 459. Um, if we try item title 5, then we only go to 50, or if we get to 501. And the reason for that is because 501 is the 500th record because I started at 2 for some bizarre reason. Don't overthink it. I promise delegation is not working. Um, here, so Juan's little formula was a very nice ad for us. And I've lost that formula now. What was it? It was filter giant starts with title and then uh, self dot search text. There you go. And then we have to turn searchable back on, back to true. 
Ta-da! And then if we hit the drop down, we would see we go way down. Yay! So there you go. That is a little bit of fun with starts with. There is also a uh, companion function called ends with. Ends with is never delegable as far as I can tell. So I have literally never used ends with. So take that for what it's worth. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, remember that, you know, I come up with these things from the comments and things you leave. So leave me ideas, feedback below. Always love to hear any of that. Also remember we have a bunch of live training classes coming up in the first part of next year. We try to run those once a quarter. So go to training.powerapps911.com. You can download this video, this app, if you sign up for the curated library, or you can uh, you know, sign up for one of the actual training classes to get a little more in the, the weeds and the details of all this. So with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do. Then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.